How is it that the Rivers of Blood was nerfed into the ground to the point where it's almost unusable, yet the Eleanor's pole blade was almost not touched at all, and it can be considered way better than the majority of weapons in this game? My name is Pastor Gaines, and this is a level 150 Dex Arcane Eleanor's pole blade build that is certain to carry you through this entire game with ease, giving you high damage and an incredibly fun way to play. So, let's get into it. So the Elden Ring community is no stranger to Eleanor's pole blade, but I feel like it really isn't used that much. I haven't seen many builds that have used this weapon and also given you a really good setup providing your talismans and buffs to make this weapon shine immensely. So with this build, I have done that and I'm going to provide you everything we need from the armor, the talismans, weapons, everything we're going to be using to make sure that you have the most efficient Elden Ring playthrough possible. So let's jump in immediately to how this build is going to work, starting with the talismans. Right now, I am using the Warrior Jar Shard, but in this slot, you should be using the Shard of Alexander because that's going to give you a 15% attack power boost to your skills. But the Warrior Jar Shard, which I'm using now, is going to give me an attack power boost of 10%, which isn't as good, but it will do the trick for now. In Talisman slot number two, we're going to be using the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia because the Eleanor's Pole Blade hits so fast and has so many consecutive attacks, you are going to start proccing this Talisman almost immediately with any combo that you do with this build. This Talisman is going to greatly increase the attack power of our successive attacks, all the way up until 13% attack power boost, which is really great providing us more damage. The next Talisman in Talisman slot number three we're using is the Fire Scorpion Charm. Eleanor's Pole Blade has blood flame on it so the fire damage is going to be boosted from this charm and it's going to give us a 12% damage boost but be careful because you are going to take 10% more damage using this talisman. I feel like the majority of the stuff that we're fighting in this game is pretty much dead before it can even hit us though so it does not matter overall. And for our talisman slot number four we're going to be using the Lord of Blood's Exaltation because Eleanor's pole blade does have blood loss innately on the weapon this is going to give us a 20% damage proc every single time hemorrhage is procced on your target giving you a massive bump in damage. Now to get these talismans for this build, the Warrior Jar Shard is going to be located if you kill Alexander early within his quest line. If you don't kill him and do his quest line all the way through, you will get the Shard of Alexander, which I highly recommend you do instead. The Rotten Wing Sword Insignia is going to be a quest reward at the end of Milson's quest line. I'll leave a video link to that in the description down below, so if you do need to know how to do that, you'll have that video for you. The Fire Scorpion Charm is going to be located in Seathwater Terminus, on top of Fort Lead on one of the ramparts, and the Lord of Blood's Exaltation is going to be dropped by the end boss in the dungeon of the Lindell Catacombs right here on the map. So the weapon that we're using for this build, Eleanor's Pole Blade, is going to have a fantastic Ash of War on it called Blood Blade Dance. This is going to hit your enemy in rapid succession, causing them almost to be stun locked, and you're going to be building up Blood Flame and Hemorrhage on your enemy, thus proccing your talismans and some of your armor. This weapon is going to have a physical damage of 176 plus 155, but it's also going to have fire damage of 176 plus 63. With an attribute scaling of E in Strength, C in Dexterity, and D in arcane, this weapon may look like it's not going to do a ton of damage by the attribute scaling, but it does a ton. Another great perk of this weapon is it does have blood loss on the weapon at 72, which means you are going to be proccing this within about four slices in your Ash of War, and if you use your heavy R2, you can spin around and proc this pretty much in one combo. The attributes required for this weapon are Strength 12, Dexterity 21, and Arcane at 19, so there are some stat requirements for this weapon, but by the time you find it in Altus Plateau, you are going to have everything leveled you need. This weapon can be attained if you defeat Eleanor the Violent Bloody Finger at the Second Church of Merica right here in Altus Plateau. The fight is not that difficult, but if she gets you in one of her combos, it can turn into a fight for your life, so just be careful of that. Hey guys, per usual, I just want to say a quick thank you for watching this far into the video. If you're getting value or if you're loving the content that you're watching, hit that subscribe button. It helps my channel out a ton. We are about to do some Lords of the Fallen content, which I am super freaking excited about. So, if you like that, Lies of P and Elden Ring stuff, hit the sub button, continue on this journey with me, and let's get into the flask. Now for our Flask of Wonders Physic, we are using two tiers that complement this build incredibly well, and the first tier is the Flame Shrouding Crack tier, which is going to temporarily boost our fire attacks by 20%, which is a massive damage increase, and then we're using the Thorny Crack tier, which is going to temporarily boost our successive attack power, which complements Eleanor's Pole Blade incredibly well, giving us a 20% attack power boost to our damage, once again providing an immense amount of value to this build. The Flame Shrouding Crack tier can be attained very early within the game. 
If you head east from the Smoldering Church and fight the Putrid Avatar at the Minor Erdtree in Kaelid, you will be able to get this upon defeat. And the Thorny Crack tier is a much later game tier, but it can be acquired in the Consecrated Snowfields after you defeat the Putrid Avatar at the Minor Erdtree east of the Liturgical Town here on the map. Now for our armor, every single thing we're wearing is aesthetic except for the helmet. We are wearing the White Mask, which is going to give us an extra 10% damage increase upon Blood Loss. This is going to stack with our Lord of Blood's Exaltation, as well as the Thorny Crack tier and the Rotwing Sword Insignia. All of that attack power is going to proc at once, allowing us to automatically start hitting like an absolute truck. For the rest of the armor, we're using Hoslo's Armor Altered, we're using Hoslo's Gauntlets, and the All-Knowing Greaves. I really like how everything looks here. It's always very, very hard to match the White Mask with any armor set you come up with, but I feel like I've done a reasonable job of this, and I think overall we look really cool. And let's be honest, if you don't look cool in a video game, then what's the point of playing the game? So if you want to get any of these for yourself, the White Mask can be found in Moog's Palace by one of the three assassins that you run into there. The Hoslo's Armor and the Hoslo's Gauntlets are going to be from the third letter in Volcano Manor. If you start that quest line, you will naturally come upon this. And the All-Knowing Greaves are going to be obtained after you defeat Gideon towards the end of the game. Now some final thoughts that are going to help you out with this build before I give you the stats. I'm using just a regular dagger with the Golden Vow Ash of War on it. I don't have enough faith to get all the way up to the actual Golden Vow, so I'm using this to help buff my damage and my damage negation. I'm also going to be using the Frenzied Flame Seal, which has no weight, so it's not going to affect anything, and this is going to allow me to cast Flame Grant Me Strength, giving us more physical and fire damage. If you don't want to use Golden Vow, though, you can use something like the Blood Boil Aromatic, which is going to skyrocket your damage up 30%, but be careful because you will take 25% more damage, so just be cognizant of that. And guys, here are my stats for the build. I'm currently rocking Vigor 50, Mind 20, Endurance 23, Strength 12, Dexterity 60, Intelligence 9, Faith 15, and Arcane at 40. My main stats, obviously, are Dexterity, Arcane, and Vigor, just because those are the stats that really allow the build to function. 23 Endurance is just going to allow us to get the armor we want and also allow us to get a medium roll. And I only have 12 strength because that's the minimum amount of strength you need for the Eleanor's Pole Blade. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate the heck out of all of you guys. If you guys like the content, if you're getting value out of what I'm doing, feel free to hit the sub button and the bell notification so you can know when I'm making more content. As I said before, we are about to jump headfirst into Lords of the Fallen and I am so excited about that. But I'm still going to be using this channel for Lies of P and Elden Ring as well. So if you followed and subscribed for that, it's still coming to the channel. So without further ado, thank you guys once again. And until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.